Market to Market is everywhere you are. Subscribe to Market to Market on YouTube, find us on the PBS video app to stream on demand, and add our three podcasts on your favorite podcasting app. Welcome to the Friday, July 29th, 2022 Market Plus. And here is Mark Gold back for more discussion. Hi, Mark. Nice to be back, Brooke. All right, we've got some questions on social media that I think we'll start with. Okay. And we'll go uh, with Paul from North Dakota. He's asking, is this week's rally due to the latest actions by Russia in Ukraine? I think it's part of it. Uh, certainly, you know, when we went home Friday, everything was depressed. Uh, it looked like they signed the agreement and wheat prices were down. And then they launched a missile into Odessa and a typical with the Russians, you know, they say one thing and do another. So wheat prices certainly reacted positively. And then when you combine that with the heat on corn and beans, you know, everything really had a pretty good week. Wheat broke 40 cents on Friday off the highs, but it was still a pretty good close for the week. Uh, beans closed, not on their highs, but still, we put in a $2 move in the beans. So I think it was a combination between the Russians and the and certainly the weather I think was the number one thing. Mm -hmm. The weather impacting a lot of things. Bob in South Dakota is asking, 177 national average for corn is baked in the cake. I had to ask you what that means. You explained <laughs> it to me. Thank you. Is that what the board is still trading? If not, what is that number? Yeah, baked in the cake meaning you know is that what's set in and uh, is that what people are thinking? Is it still 177? And I'd have to say no. You look at the declines in the crop rating it hasn't been severe but we were down three points a week ago and does that mean yields are slipping chances are it does I think Monday we'll see crop ratings maybe take another little hit but where the corn is good it is really good where it's bad Kansas Nebraska North Carolina they've had a tough year um, it's tough now a lot of places that were really tough Kentucky Tennessee Arkansas Missouri, they're getting some good rains, or about to get good rains. So I think that'll kind of offset it. I saw one number the other day, which I think is a fair number, 174.9 right now. Um, I thought early in the week maybe it was a little low, and then the heat, when you look at 104 degrees in, in, in Des Moines, you can't think that that number's gonna improve a whole lot. No. But uh, Illinois is still fairly moderate. We're gonna have a couple of 90 degree days around northern Illinois. We can certainly, it's not unusual in July and August. But uh, yeah, the weather is still gonna be the key of these markets over the next five weeks. Okay, it's all about the weather, baby. <laughs> all right, well, Paul in Missouri, with cattle producers in the south selling their herds, and we talked a little bit about this earlier, will that lead to cheaper beef prices for consumers in the coming months? I don't know that it necessarily will follow. Uh, box beef was up two bucks this morning. Um, there's been good demand for the beef. The stock market, you know, everybody was talking about higher interest rates and two quarters of GDP. If we saw those numbers this week, which we did, that the stock market was gonna tank. That hasn't happened. Mm. In fact, the stock market's had a pretty good rally. That tells me that demand for meat, I think is gonna stay fairly strong here and even with more cattle coming into market we can handle with the slaughter can handle some more cattle and I think the market can handle it too maybe there'll be some beef featured here and there mm -hmm. but demand's been good and I think prices will hopefully hold up pretty well feeder cattle will be a function of the corn price in my opinion if all things being equal but it's, I look at the charts I think they acted pretty good today um, and I'm still a little bit friendly on the cattle market. Okay. I think we can move it higher yet. Okay. Well, we haven't talked China yet, so let's do that. <coughs> um, we learned this week that tensions with Nancy Pelosi's possible visit to Taiwan is yeah. causing um, ruffling some feathers uh, with China. The Biden administration also debating about lifting some of the tariffs yeah. with China. What will those two things do? How, how's this going to play out? First of all, I don't have a clue what Nancy Pelosi is doing in Taiwan. Why would you stir that nest? I have no idea why she's there. And I think, you know. And it may or may not happen. It may it's or right. may not it's, happen. Yeah. I, I would think Biden's gonna put some pretty good pressure on her not to. Uh, 
but to me, it's a foolhardy move. I, I just don't understand it. Um, but then again, I'm not on the inside. And whatever reasons they tell us, it's not the reasons that really <laughs> are on the table. Let's you don't be say. Yeah, you don't be, <laughs> let's be frank about that. Um, what was the other part of the question? The tariffs. The tariffs, yep. Uh, is Biden going to take off the tariffs? I th you know, he spent over three hours on the phone with President Xi, and there was no announcement afterwards. You would think if there was something positive for the American farmer out there, he would have been at the bully pulpit, mm -hmm. pulpit and screaming it. So I'm not sure that's going to happen right now. Is it going to happen later? You know, politics is still about the money and the deals. And is there going to be some kind of incentive for China to do something else, stay out of Taiwan, and maybe we'll lift the tariffs? Uh, we don't know. Hmm. Uh, you know, again, you and I are sitting here, and we don't have a clue what they're talking about in closed doors in, in Washington. So, and I don't know that sometimes we ever really know. But the fact of the matter is, uh, there was, nothing was announced. I don't think that's necessarily good, and, but you know, we'll see in the weeks to come whether there is something there. But uh, I, I've said this a thousand times on this show. There's nothing more bullish for the American farmer than a hungry communist with a dollar in his pocket. And if the Chinese, you know, are they understand that food security is the key for them staying in power because I think it was in 2010 11 when we had the Arab Spring that was over a lack of food and people will change regimes when they're hungry mm -hmm. and the Chinese will do whatever it takes they understand that well and will do whatever it takes to keep their people fed okay all right well what a, what about um, let's talk the futures here Farmers getting ready and looking ahead to next year. Should they be locking in their feed needs right now? They're asking me to speculate on where prices are going, mm -hmm. and I've always said, I don't know where prices are going. Uh, $6 corn is pretty pricey. F almost $15 new crop beans are pretty pricey. Meal had a $50 rally a ton. Do I want to be buying it on a high? No. Um, if it stays hot and dry, could it go a lot higher? You bet. So would I be looking at buying some call options? Here, I probably would be. Just so you got something on some protection out there. I think it makes some sense. Um, I believe that down the road, come harvest, we'll see cheaper prices out here uh, for everything. But between, you know, we could... We exploded two dollars in one week in beans. What could happen over the next four or five weeks if we get really hot and dry? Can we go test some of the highs like the May and July contracts made? It's possible. So would I look at buying a meal call out there a little bit, have some protection on? I would. Corn calls, same thing. Okay. All right. I think we've covered some ground here. Good. Good to talk to you again, Mark. Nice to be here. Yeah. Again. Thanks for joining us for your uh, insight and your time. All right, well, next week, we look at how container ships get a new port of call in the Great Lakes, and Sean Hackett will join us to analyze the markets. I'm Brooke Kohlsdorf. Thanks for watching, and have a great week.